There's so many of them saying they should just close it. What does that say? <coughs> they need to move across the street. Why won't they buy another piece of land? Yeah, so I, I, I said, Jamie, and then, then the people would say, two, on, two, two rows of traffic is only going to make it worse. How's it going to make it worse? Twice in our cars on Thursday. I'm reading all this stuff, and that's what it gets like. I want to send back to the person. You know, like I said, to the person that was moved. Why don't you just sell your hundred thousand house and go buy a five hundred thousand dollar house? Tell me how that's going to work out. Because that's what they can't move for what they're doing. People can't put that cash. That's just amazing. It's just like these people are doing this. I just think businesses are all over everything. Yeah. Start to slow down a little bit or tighten up, but you know, what worse thing is it that you know, we'll see what happens. It's nice to slow down. Yeah. 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 No route found. I don't think I ever do that before. Uh uh. 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 Uh uh.
and we pray for their safety and ask you to provide them guide them and wisdom as they work with the freedoms of these clients may the ones that need the guidance reach out and value the help and assistance that's offered we thank you for those professionals that are called in life to help those in need they are the ones that see good in people and the value in a life we pray that you'll wrap your arms around all our military and law enforcement and your protection daily provide them and their families a sense of calmness and peace as they serve our nation and our communities now we ask for your watchful eye over our meeting and shower us with your grace amen Amen. Of the United States, States of America, and, and to the Republic of which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Good morning. We'll convene the commissioner's public meeting at this time and ask for the approval of the minutes of the previous meeting. I'll move to approve. I second. All right. Aye. 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 So carried. And public comment on agenda items only at this time, Mr. Stout. Yes, Larry Stout, representing the uh, Clinton Township Volunteer Fire Company, and I'm speaking also on behalf of Todd Winder, who wishes he could be here. Um, representing the West Branch Firemen's Association, of which he's vice chairman, and he just wants to express his tremendous uh, appreciation for agenda item 4.7. And and just from a personal standpoint, I can tell you that even for us to even raise a thousand dollars, you just can't imagine how much work goes into that. And and we have to be doing that all the time. I mean, it's just a continual. You know, I mean, uh, just the things that um, people don't realize that these 28 companies and how they protect this county and anything we can do and, and your actions are, are admirable, but I hope the citizenry as well would say, you know, ask themselves, what can I do to help uh, the fire companies? Because they're volunteers and uh, uh, we sacrifice a lot to be able to do those things, but it's because we care about our community and um, when the siren goes off or you know the beeper hits you know you're out there but also you have to be out there for the potluck dinner that you're doing the food for so that you can get a couple bucks from each person and have enough and then and then the cleanup afterwards so it takes a it's a lot of work so again just thank you thank you thank you for this and keep it up <laughs> thank, thank you Larry. anyone else okay nothing, nothing online, online? <clears throat> All right, uh, 2.0 reports, branding, uh, approved counts, payable cash requirements report. Good morning, Good morning commissioners. Uh, presented for your approval are the invoices due through July 27th, 2022, um, that are paid on 7-21-2022 in the amount of $1,069,000. $597.30. Of that, $320,229.27, or approximately 30%, is coming from the county's general fund. $204,225.44, or approximately 19%, is coming from grants and other sources. $499,751.09, or approximately 47%, is coming from RMS, and $45,391.50, or approximately 4%, are coming from escrow funds. Are there any questions this week? I don't have any. Okay. I have a motion. I'll move to approve. Uh, second. All clear side? Uh, Aye. So okay. Thank you. Thank you, Brady. 2.2, Maya, are you online? I'll take it. Okay. Uh, Commissioner, seeking your approval on the list of contracts uh, that I approved for the month of June. So these are the ones under 10,000. Yeah. And really eclectic. Uh, group of contracts here having to do with everything from uh, door replacement to interpretive services, um, postage, postage, 
GPS units. Okay. Okay, anyone of my colleagues have any questions? No. Nope. I'll move to approve. Okay. I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 So carried. Thank you. Okay, moving on to 3.0 or 3.1 information items. Jason York. Jason. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Commissioners, the um, RMS will be going out for bid for two tarping machines for the landfill. Tarping machines are what we use every morning and every evening that we roll up and unroll the tarps to cover up the waste with the working face. This is a huge advantage versus using six inches of soil to cover the waste every night. So you can't, when you're not in operation, you must have your working face cover up. So we use tarps. So these are a budgeted item that we'll be going out to bid for. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, moving on to action items. Kristen, are you on the line? She's in our eyes. Oh, I missed you. Yeah. How can I miss you? Hey, Kristen, before you start, congratulations on your new position. Thank you. Thank you. I will be with you for a few more weeks um, and probably in front of you at least four or five more times um, before that, but I appreciate that. Uh, this is the agreement between CETA Council of Governments and Lycoming County for the administration of your 2021 CDBG program. Um, it is within line of with the scope of services that was presented to you last year um, before we started the process. And um, there is the, the cost for it, and this is to administer the county's funds, Jersey Shore, South Williamsport, and Montoursville Borough is, um, it is in total 99300 and then there are some delivery costs, which are all project-based. Okay. I have a motion. I'll move to approve. I'll second. Any further questions or discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 So carry. Thank, Thank you very much. Okay, uh, 4.2. Commissioner, seeking your approval on resolution 2022-12 for the CCOG Joint Rail Authority. Um, this resolution uh, is adding another county to the Joint Rail Authority. I believe we're the last one to to join. It, it enabled Snyder County to join. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I move to approve. I second. All in favor say aye. 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 So carried. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Commissioner seeking your approval on the consent and joinder. Uh, this is another document that authorizes you to uh, be in the application for Snyder County to join city. Okay. Joint Rail. Joint Rail. City Guard Joint Rail. Yeah. That's okay. I have a motion. I move to approve. I'll second. All fair side. Aye. 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 So Action item 4.4. .4. Commissioner seeking your approval. For a $500,000 grant allocation to Citizen Hose Company of Jersey Shore. Yeah, I believe we have Bruce here. Bruce, you like to come up and yes. kind of highlight what your department covers and yes, I will. proximity. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. I'll give you an overview of uh, Citizens Hose Company in Jersey Shore. We basically have two divisions the fire division and the EMS division. Citizens Hose for the 2021 calendar year, uh, there were 369 calls, and we are contracted for fire protection in seven municipalities, Jersey Shore Borough, Porter Township, Pyatt Township, Watson, Anthony, Mifflin, and Saladiesburg. So we're serving approximately 9,500 9, county residents and approximately 87 square miles. We also provide heavy rescue and rapid intervention and automatic aid for mun multiple municipalities spanning from Beach Creek to Muncie to Loganton to Trout Run. The EMS division last year handled 2,862 calls 
and we are the primary provider for the following municipalities in Lycoming County. Anthony, Brown, Cummings, Limestone, McHenry, Mifflin, Nippinose, Pyatt, Porter, Watson, Saladinsburg, Jersey Shore, and we also cross over into Clinton County and serve Avis and Pine Creek. Basically, we're following the footsteps of the school district, which also crosses over into Clinton County. We also cover portions of Cogan House, Pine and Woodward Township in Lycoming County, and Crawford and Green Township in Clinton County. And so we're serving approximately 20,000 residents over a square mileage of 525 square miles. That's what we do in Citizens Host Company in Jersey Shore. Is there anything else you'd like to notice, commissioners? A busy, busy group of folks, of prof professionals. You know, if you have a copy of that, we'd love to put it into the minutes. I will give this to you, sir. You want to submit that for submission to the minutes? That would be great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Can I have a motion on action items 4.4? I'm going to approve. Yeah, I'll, I'll second that. Is there any comments or discussion? Yeah. Would you want to? Well, go ahead. Why don't you start? I'll add. I'll add. You start. <laughs> I insist. Why don't you go? <laughs> <laughs> no, this is much, this is much more, um, obviously what uh, Bruce described is what the fire company does, and um, it's, unbelievable and it's another one of the items that often our citizens take for granted uh, as as Larry Stout uh, mentioned in terms of uh, just you're gonna be there right someone's gonna be there if you have a fire if you have an EMS uh, situation but what citizens did in this situation went beyond putting out fires that went beyond answering um, calls for EMS and what it was was it was stepped up to the plate in terms of how can we improve economic development in our community and help build jobs for our people you might think well geez why would a fire company do that or how could they do it well, what they did is they own the Wheelan Center and the Wheelan Center uh, had been built I believe with with fire company funds uh, and it was a meeting hall, and it's a place over the years that all types of citizens have been able to gather. And West Manufacturing uh, came and said, listen, we want to expand our operations, but guess what? Our plant is right next to the Wheeland Center. And is that correct, right? It's right next to the Wheeland and Center. across from the fire hall. And it's across right, from the fire hall. Right, right next to the West Hall. Right. So, um, uh, Commissioner Masser and I and Commissioner Metzger was unable to attend, but we went up there a couple of years ago. It's been now literally two years. October 2020. Yeah. I, I remember that because I was on vacation. That's the last time I was on vacation. <laughs> See what happens when you go on vacation? And uh, they, we met there and they said to us, look, we really want to help out this job expansion and the creation of possibly 150 new jobs, which obviously brings people to live in the borough and it helps the overall economy for the people who are there. But we have a problem, and the problem is that West uh, wants to purchase the building, but the uh, amount of the appraised value, I believe, was less than what they felt their board would justifiably pay. Um, so in these kinds of situations, commissioners are faced with a difficult uh, pos uh, position because, you know, on, the un on one hand, obviously, all public funds are very sacred. On the other hand, we also recognize that by helping citizens to enable the economic development to happen, that everyone would benefit in the sense that we would create more jobs, that's more tax revenue, it's more people being able to buy homes, it's, it's repopulating our county, repopulating our county. That's the one thing I hope people will really, really think about every day when they wake up. How can we repopulate this county which has dropped down? Um, and so uh, we, we said that we would take it under consideration. We obviously needed to confer with Commissioner Metzger. Um, and uh, I'll let you take off from here and, and describe what happened. Basically, basically at the nail on the head. Um, we recognize the hard work that, that all our volunteers do. And uh, Bruce, I mean, if you were in our meeting yesterday with Bruce, I mean, he was he was strong arm. No, no, he was he, he was a, a huge advocate for uh, both the fire and EMS. And um, we did make that we made a commitment that we would help. And uh, understanding that you know when you're accepting 
less money for a property that you put a lot of work into, and whether it's chicken barbecues and you know bingos or whatnot, and that's that's a tough pill to swallow. And uh, they needed some sort of reassurance from the county that we would be there to step in when the, the need arise. Uh, and and we're doing that today. Um, we appreciate the hard work that everyone does. And uh, this was just one of the steps uh, in the entire process. Uh, you know, Jersey Shore is, is uh, to our west in our county. And there's not a whole lot of times that we could help, you know, uh, our Western partners out there. And this is one time that we could. Um, and hopefully there are more endeavors coming up that uh, we can, you know, contribute as well. Uh, you have, well, when you take a look at the overall taxes uh, from school districts to your city and, and county taxes, it's, it's a tough pill to swallow. And whenever we can help uh, that community come better um, and uh, support it, we plan on being there for you. So uh, thanks for all of your efforts. Yeah, I mean, it was a real, it was a real lot of leadership that they <coughs> showed to be able to step up and say, okay, we're willing to embark on on selling our our hall because it isn't just Jersey Shore that benefits. The seven areas that Bruce mentioned are also areas where people might come to work in Jersey Shore. They'll come from Williamsport. They'll come from all over the county to work at West. And you know, we appreciate West investment and. West obviously got a big benefit out of this too, and I hope West is grateful, and should be grateful because they, they basically, the citizens of this county put up $500,000 of the money they have to help that West expansion. And, uh, and so uh, hopefully all around it, it uh, creates a positive synergy for us. So that's what the $500,000 is about, and uh, it probably will come from our Act 13 mm -hmm. funds. Act 13. So it's not coming from taxpayer revenue in the sense of real estate taxes. You know, when I ran for office, um, when I went and knocked on people's doors, what I often heard up in Jersey Shore was, you know, the county line seems to end it west of Williamsport, right there at the western border, you know, and it ends at the eastern end of Matoorsville. You know, we live in the largest geographical county in the state. And we have to remember that we can help all of our residents. And this is a way we can give back to Jersey Shore. Jersey Shore is growing. You know, West Company's going on up there, and they're expanding, and and Bolsburg, and um, there's a lot of projects up there that, that need assistance. So um, this is a way that we can give back to that population of the county. That's also helping other parts of the county, like Commissioner Mayor Beal says. That we want to grow the population. We grow the population. Um, we keep the tax base down uh, work by bringing more residents in and paying taxes. If we, if we lose residents, then we have to pay more taxes in the long run. Or raise them. We don't want to do that. So it's, it's important that uh, we recognize all parts of our county and we're doing that in this. And at the same time, uh, those people that are, are working up there are from all over the county. And uh, we want to appreciate uh, their volunteerism at that fire department along with all our volunteers. It's a, it's a, uh, they're few and far between. They're special people. So thank you. You know, uh, I worked for a large company at one time, and um, West is a large company, and it's amazing what they look at to decide. Well, are we going to expand? Okay, and one of the most critical things that they do look at is its workforce. And it's not only its population, but its workforce. And so when I worked for UPS and, and I talked to a couple people, uh, management in, in West Company, there's a work ethic in the people in Jersey Shore, the valley, Salisbury, you know, that it, it's just not matched throughout the nation. You know, there is that feeling of, this is my home and we want to make it better, and, and we're not afraid of work. That is very powerful. And when you see that they have the buildings there, I mean, they could have 
chosen a number of other places, and they were talking about that. But I believe not only because everybody was cooperative with them, they realized that the workforce is here, the people that are willing to put you know, hard labor in and work as a team was here. And it makes our decision a lot easier as well. So just one that. You know, Commissioner, that was the sentiment expressed by Mr. Digger when we yeah. went down and we talked to him and we said, he's from Indiana, we said, look, all these places, why did you pick uh, Lycoming County? And he said uh, that the rural workforce is a workforce that... It's unmatched. Unmatched. So that's what we have over the cities. So we got to exploit it now and, and uh, really try to expand our, our county. Okay, I have a motion. I'll move to approve. I'll second. Oh, there's the aye. 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 So carry on. <clears throat> 4.5. Commissioner seeking your approval for a $1 million allocation for the construction of new, the new magisterial district ju justice facility in Jersey Shore. Okay. Uh, we have been up to uh, the Jersey Shore area and uh, have observed firsthand the uh, current building that the Magistrate Dieter's in. Um, we feel that uh, at this time it's best to move out with a new facility. Um, the, the facility lacks many safety features that are required in today's um, world and um, it's uh, we, we designed one up at the Solomon's office that's state-of-the-art um, which is one that uh, will be lasting now for the next 40 years and um, um, Judge Dieter has expressed to us since she took office that she is in dire need of, of a, uh, an office that is safe for her and constituents up in that area. Um, so we have decided to move out on this, and uh, which will grow into the next uh, next part of the uh, action item 4.6. We'll explain in a minute. Yeah. And you know, I want to I want to just. Well, you know what? Maybe we ought to put 4.6 on the table with the motion also so we can just talk about the you two of them both, together. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. I'll move to approve 4.5 on the million dollars for Jersey Shore and 4.6 for the regional public safety okay. complex. Can I get a second? I'll second. Okay. In discussion. Okay. So, and I just wanted to talk about this very openly because I'm sure that I see the coroner here and I'm sure that some people say, geez, commissioner, what are you guys crazy? You, you've got a coroner who's been asking for a building for X number of years and you just wham, you approve this these are related and they're also a commitment by the commissioners to do both the reason we're approving today the Jersey Shore is that there are grants and there are funding out there that we need to get moving and by putting the money out there and we have full commitment to the coroner's building and I hope I hope the coroner realizes that and we're going to continue to search all of us are going to continue to search to make something happen the funding that we are approving today is so that we can jumpstart the project in terms of getting shovels in the ground that, and also continue a commitment that we have to trying to regionalize services, which is what the, gen the gentlemen and gentlewomen in the audience have brought to us with this public safety complex, and it's going to house a number of different functions. But the point is, we're, we're planning to have just, uh, Justice Judge Dieter's offices there so that it will be part of that building. So that approval of those funds today is so that all the agencies that we're looking out there for, whether it's the state with an RCAP grant, whether it's Federal Economic Development Agency, whether it's uh, any other grants we're trying to get, sees that we're moving ahead with this. And as soon as we get that building found for the coroner, we will do the same. I mean, we will move out in a way that we leverage our money, like we did with the airport, where we put up about a million dollars of local money, and we were able to get $15 million in federal and state money. We're hoping that by doing this, we're going to put some public county money out there, we're going to be able to leverage it and get a lot of other funds. So that's why we're there today. I just want to uh, let the public know that we've not lost our commitment or overlooked or anything. It's about trying to be logical and be precise in how we spend money. So I've asked uh, Chief DeRamer and uh, Cody Hoover um, from Jersey Shore to come today and, and basically outline the public safety building and what the population is that you serve in that area. So Chief, you come up first and uh, explain how this came about 
Uh, we have been to the uh, Jersey Shore Police Department. Uh, <laughs> if you heard, been in that building, uh, you used to watch this the show. Bigger. This room, yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you used to watch the show, uh, Andy Griffin and the old police station that they had, that makes this look nice. And uh, I mean, when you have ceiling tiles falling down in the bathroom, water leaks, they're in the floodplain. Uh, the officers are, are, I think, basically on top. Of, I mean, literally on top of each other. Right. You have no storage. It is. It's. It's appalling that you've been able to. And I give you and your staff credit for for living in those conditions and working in those conditions for as long as it, as long as you have. But go ahead and explain to the public what. Sure. So. I started in Jersey Shore Borough in 2003, and the building literally looks the exact same, other than we now have steel boiler plate on our windows, because last year we had an individual with mental health come and kick three of our windows out. Well, that really raised awareness that we need to have better facilities, safer facilities, and that's not just happening in Jersey Shore, that happens all over. You, you would have never imagined 20 years ago people coming and shooting codes officers or managers and things like that but this is a different world that we're living in and, and clearly public safety is top priority um, so 2003 I started there it's about 3,000 square feet it was a six-man police department I would say that the space was adequate 2010 Jersey Shore and Porter took the steps and regionalized and became Tidot and Valley Regional Porter Township had like a closet is where they actually worked out of in the municipal building so it was better operations to bring them down to our police station. So now we cram 10 people into 3,000 square foot building. And then fast forward, we've also taken on Pyatt Township, Cummings Township, McHenry Township, Nippenos Township. Regionalization seems to be the, the hot topic now with you know cost rising, consolidation has to happen. So we've also added two full-time officers and two part-time officers. So now we are literally on top of each other. Now I have a I wouldn't call it a nice office. I have a nice space to work out of, but these other guys, you know, are cramming in to a workspace that is just, I mean, deplorable conditions. It really is. You know, these officers will eat at a table and then later clean their guns there or package evidence on that same table. So we have no space to work. Um, we were in the process 2017 of, of building our own building, which would have been in the 1500 block of Allegheny Street. But then probably 2020, we started a Thames program, which is where we partner up with Jersey Shore Area EMS and actually have medics that are tactical medics, six, six of them, Bruce? We have six tactical medics that are actually tied to the police department. We started working together. Four of our officers are also volunteer firemen between either Station 345 or even Cummings Township, Waterville, I'm not sure, 28 I think is what they are. And so we all have that connection. We have public safety, public service connection with everybody. So Shane Newbine actually were talking and thought, well, what if we were to combine into one big building? And all of these things just started to take place. Then the borough had expressed interest, and then comes Denise Theater Magistrate in Jersey Shore. Their building is an all-female staff, and there's no security, no safety. Jerry Lepley was a master in karate. It really wasn't something that he was too concerned about then, but you know, it starts to raise these ideas like maybe we should do something different, which is now what brought the county into this was to say, hey, does this benefit? One of the things that I think is, is crazy to me is we have all these social halls, all these meeting rooms, all of these facilities that sit and they're used once a month. You know, Jersey Shore Borough Council Chambers is used like once a month. Porter Township's chambers are used once a month. And that happens all over. So we're paying to condition these for once a month use. Why wouldn't we want to bring these all in together? The police commission doesn't interfere with the, the borough council and it doesn't interfere with the trainings and these things. So why not give something back? That's really what spearheaded this is we waste a lot of money on just utilities alone, you know, to condition buildings so we can have our own building, you know, why not do this together and we share in it. Tidot actually covers now approximately 175 square miles, which is, I'm going to say, the largest coverage area for any police in the state, and we have about 8,000 residents. And obviously, it's in the newspaper that regionalization through policing is continuing to grow, and I just feel that next year we're going to be probably twice the size that we will be. So regionalization is it, whether it comes from fire, EMS, police, I think that we need to continue going that way. Is that good? Any questions? Any questions? For 
Now, I just want to make an unsolicited comment to you that I I commend you for the efforts that you're doing with uh, Hepburn Township and Old Lake Cumming, and I know it's been controversial, and I know it's been in the paper. I'll take off my commissioner hat because I don't usually weigh in on what other municipalities do because no one really cares what I think about that. But I will tell you as a taxpayer, I commend you for the work you're doing, and I hope that the Old Lake Cumming Township residents will understand that the work that's trying to be done, because as a resident of Hepburn Township, I know that my supervisors are supportive of, of mm -hmm. moving in the regionalization with your folks. I hope they'll realize that the way we're going to survive in rural Pennsylvania is if we do exactly what you just described so we keep taxes under control. Because all, if we can do that, it'll be another way to attract people to be here and it'll allow people to stay here, uh, especially our seniors. So I just wanted to tell you thank you for doing that. I know you've taken a lot of hits in the paper as well as some of the uh, Supervisors, but I hope at the end of the day they all realize that it's being done for the for the public's good. Sure is. Now Thank we, you, Commissioner. Yep, you will echo those comments. Regionalization is is vital. It's the only way we're going to be able to survive. You have your fire, you have the police, the borough, all in the same building. You're going to have now a magistrate connected with it on the same block. It, it's easy access for the public up there, and uh, and that's what we need to do in today's technology. Put everything under one roof. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bruce, you have anything else you want to add? Cody. And then Cody. Oh, Cody. I'm sorry. Yeah, Cody. First off, I want to say thank you to the commissioners for your support of the regionalization project. One thing about Jersey Shore is we're a team. The chief, Bruce, the fire company, the borough police magistrate we're all a team up there and allowing us to be under one building it's going to make that team work even more efficiently than it already does as Bruce and chief said they cover between 180 to 250 square miles depending on the service provided if you break that down by about a 1200 square mile county the services in Jersey Shore cover about 20 percent of the county in services and this is allowing them a home where most of them have not had a new home since the 50s um, as Chief said, with the police building, the fire company, we've worked at maintaining those buildings, but it's time so that the services can flourish, but now that the people who are providing those services need support, and we really appreciate that. So the borough also is involved because where the building is going to go is where our current highway building sits along with the current uh, fire company building, and so it'll require movement of our highway building to a different location. So we appreciate your support and being able to start that phase one of the project. Okay, thank you. Another another uh, factor to consider in the magistrate's office is, and it's been about a year ago since we were approached by the courts uh, about security in all the magistrate's offices. We have six magistrates that are located geographically throughout the state, and uh, there was all kinds of proposals uh, thrown out there to hire extra deputies to man those uh, magistrate offices. Uh, we would need we would need five. The one obviously is in the courthouse. The sheriffs are right located outside of his door, so we'd have to find security for additional five magistrate offices. This addresses one of those magistrates, and um, by having uh, Ms. Dieter, Judge Dieter connected to the building with the police department, it addresses that immediately. Yeah, that's a really important point, and yeah. I hope the public understands that, that we have a responsibility to provide, uh, to make sure that those judges are safe, and this is one less place. I think also having people together creates a synergy that actually excites people about getting involved, either as volunteer fire people, uh, firemen and women, or in other ways. So um, there's not a sense of isolation, which is what happens sometimes when you're out there. Okay. I'd just like to add that you know, we had realtors looking for land for Judge Dieter as well. You know. When, uh, one of the issues that we've had with the corner so far is that we wanted so many entities put in the same place that it was very difficult to find the, the correct plot of land, or the building, or whatnot. And we thought, oh, geez, we're going to go down the same path with the uh, Judge Deere uh, office. So there, the availability of land is just not there. We, we don't see it for uh, the locations that we're looking for anyway. And, uh, Especially in that area. In that area, right. And uh, when we had one pop up, it was uh, sold immediately. Two days. Yeah, in two days. So uh, 
it's difficult when, when you're a government entity to, to <coughs> look for something. You know, it does, it, things take time, and then you have to follow procedures, and you can't make offers, and you got to do this in the public eye, and, and all of a sudden you just lost an opportunity. And, and things happen that way, but uh, we feel quite confident that uh, with the partnership that we see developing here, uh, things are going to look re really good in the next couple of years for you. And, and we're, so the public understands the buildings, the fire company's building is going to be torn down. Uh, and they're going to be able to build it there. So that was one hurdle we were over already. Yeah. We had the land. And that, that and the house next door. Right. And a shout out to Penn Strategies because they, they put together some paperwork for us that, that gave mm -hmm. us a, a better understanding of where you were in your funding as well. And uh, that seems to always help. And I think Penn Strategies has been working with you to make your case to the state and federal entities. So that has also been very helpful. Well, they, they've submitted um, for different grants. They've received a grant already. Continue to wait. Uh, there's been an earmark put in for it by Senator Casey's office. Right. Um, so um, as they accumulate the monies, it's, it's been a partnership. Right. Um, they've also uh, uh, put in an application to the First Community Foundation. So. And Senator Casey has an earmark for the coroner's office. Yes. Right. Yes. We have a we have a million dollar earmark with Senator Casey. So we yeah. are not letting that go by the wayside either. Okay. And I have a motion for action item 4.4 and 4 point, or excuse me, 4.5 and 4.6. We did. We had a second. All in favor say aye. 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 So carried. Right. 4.7. John LaValle. I think 13 allocations. Where are you, John? Good morning, Commissioner. Um, as a result of the uh, ARPA pre-grant application process, there was a clear need to assist the volunteer fire departments throughout the county. Um, compounding this issue, volunteer fire departments haven't been eligible for the other um, CARES uh, the CARES Act, COVID CARES Act, things like that uh, that have come through uh, as a result of the pandemic. Uh, while also losing out on their traditional uh, methods of fundraising. Um, it was determined that the same issue was going to present itself again with the ARPA money. Basically, um, they would be precluded based on tax filing status, um, and also uh, procurement regulations would also hamper progress. Um, so for that reason, the ARPA <coughs> project team is recommending that the commissioners provide a one-time grant in the amount of $20,000 to each volunteer fire company within Lycoming County. Um, and then if approved, uh, we'll start working on getting letters sent out to all fire chiefs tomorrow. Okay. It's important to understand it. Um, these fire companies also put in some other requests. And that this has nothing to this allocation of funds has nothing to do with their, their other request. Yeah. And we're looking at those as we go through the LBR the request. We we have seventy eight million dollars worth of request for twenty two million dollars. So as we continue to eliminate, cut that down, we're getting closer and closer to announcing. But uh, those requests are all being honored and looked at and, and considered as we go forward, and that has nothing to do with the commissioner said with this coming out at 13 months. So this is 28 times, 28 entities here, 20,000 each, $560,000 of Act 13 money. We know that one of the allowed categories under the Act 13 legislation is to bolster our public safety and volunteer fire companies. So it's a, it, it's a good use of the money. Yes. And, and uh, Mr. Stow, we appreciate all the work that all of the volunteers do and honestly I think as citizens we have to say look do we want our volunteers spending time um, cooking chicken <coughs> or do we want them to spend time training because there's only 24 hours in a day and the demands on people's time is even harder than it was so we appreciate the chicken oh I do no we do <laughs> no, and we understand you know if you've been to a, to a fire company dinner I, I remember being in, in in picture rocks and looking around the room at all the people who were there and saying that this is what community is about right so it's more than cooking a chicken right 
but it, that's part of what it's about. But, but we also have to be realistic about the ability of people to raise money and the time they have. And so the time they can spend training and the time that they can spend doing that is, is very important. So. And Joe, keep, the, keep those fish dinners going. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I hit seven of the nine. <laughs> it's good stuff. You know, you know, I just want to add this, is that we have roughly about $22 million in our, I, I believe, in our Act 13 money. Some of it, you know, is allocated but, or restricted, but for the most part, it's $22 million. And it's $22 million because we said no to a lot of people. You know, I think the public needs to understand that. We are the stewards of the finances of this county. And, and Act 13 was a blessing that came upon us by, by good legislation. If we wish it would have been better. We, we understand that. But nonetheless, we have so many requests during the, the course of a year that we could spend that in two weeks. Right, and it and it takes a, a a lot of due diligence on our part to say, is that project worthy? Because that money we use to leverage, and we usually get seven dollars out of each dollar that we spend, which is a tremendous amount of money, and it does make uh, generational differences, as, as Bruce would uh, alluded to in a, in a meeting. And we want to thank Bruce for, for talking about that because you know we were lost as how are we going to allocate this? But when you when you mention the generational uh, you know impacts to our community, it made us think in a different way. So uh, there again, thanks. And and to all the departments, the 28 of them, thank you for what they do. Uh, the countless hours that they they, they, they dedicate. You know, they're away from their families. You know, Holidays, weekends, uh, they miss out on a lot of things because of their dedication. So I want to thank them for, uh, because without them, we would have to, have to pay departments and taxes, tax base won't be there. They couldn't support it. So we want to thank your special people. They truly are. And thank you for risking your lives because every time you go out to a fire, you don't know what the heck is going to happen. It's not just fires, it's, it's, it's everything. all kinds of emergency right. calls. And uh, they, they see stuff that uh, that has to stay with any human being, you know, psychologically too. And and, um, and you know, to the public, before you just call the fire company, think about whether or not what you need is really something that the fire company. Because Todd Winder has brought this to our attention quite often that the fire company is getting called for everything from you know taking the cat out of the tree to helping. Uh, get somebody into a car or etc. And you have to really think about it because when you call them, you're taking them away from what might be a really critical situation somewhere else. So, and one shout out to John and, and Shannon. Yes, and to the planning yeah. department. Yeah. There are many reasons why you want us to make these allocations as quick as possible. <laughs> get, off yeah. plate. <laughs> get it off the plate because it's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we appreciate the job you're doing. I mean, you, yeah, thank you. It's extraordinary. Yeah. It's been fun. <laughs> okay, I have a motion. I'll move to approve. I'll second. All favor say aye. 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 Would any of the chiefs have anything they would like to say? Thank you. Yes. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. <coughs> Okay, 4.8. Right. Meyer, are you on the line? I am. Can you hear me now? Yep, we do. All right, good. Finally. Uh, sorry about the last time. I'm not sure what happened. I was on, but couldn't hear me. Um, Go ahead and take 4.8 through 4.12. Okay, perfect. I was just going to ask. All right, the first item I have for you is the two food grant monitoring agreement. It's with the Buck Volunteer Fire Company, number one. It's to um, put 80000 towards their SMART program or a paid fire service rescue. And I know we had, uh, I contacted Michael Minier, and I believe he was going to be present. Yep, he's, he's here today. Why don't come up and say a few words if he wouldn't be willing to? Sure. And we also have Tyler. If you'd like to come up and say something, too. Thank you. So, Susquehanna so Mutual Regional Aid. Could you speak in the, we're and, live streaming? And state, and state, state name. name. It's uh, Michael Minier, I'm the fire chief at Lawsock, volunteer you. fire company. So, the Susquehanna Mutual Aid Regional Team, or SMART concept as it's uh, known, um, this concept, it's a agreement between 
the two municipalities of Loyalsock Township and South Williamsport Borough, along with uh, two fire companies, Loyalsock and South Williamsport. Um, the above municipalities and fire companies are working together uh, to solve a problem that plagues all of Lycoming County, which is the lack of available manpower during the daytime. After a lot of deliberation, we proposed the SMART concept, um, which continues to promote volunteerism within the communities. It's not taken away from volunteers. Volunteers are still very much needed uh, for this concept. Uh, the fire companies, the township, the borough um, have and always will put the needs of the communities first. Um, implementing the SMART concept combines resources and shares staff and cost-effective delivery of public safety. So there's no change in the quality of public service um, that the, uh, citizens will be receiving. Um, under the uh, SMART concept, uh, we'll share services, which is the goal, uh, regionalization type goal. The teams will continue to provide effective and efficient uh, tactics and all responses using reliable equipment, trained and skilled personnel. Uh, the fu future offers an expansion of the SMART concept to grow the services as needed to provide pro fire protection, emergency services, public safety, public education to the public. Uh, one of the main objectives is to economically maintain and provide the public safety to the communities while supplementing volunteerism upon the uh, departments. A staff truck will be has housed at both Oil Sock and South Williamsport. Um, the firefighters will be responsible to respond on all the calls, including uh, emergency medical priority calls and assisting the existing emergency medical services. Uh, volunteers will continue to uh, respond to all of those types of calls in addition <coughs> to um, other tasks that they'll be uh, assigned, daily chores um, around the station, uh, checking vehicles, uh, emergency and special events, uh, going out and doing those as long as, as such as pre-planning, walkthroughs of newly built uh, structures. And um, unfortunately, the age of volunteerism is going on throughout not only our county, but throughout the state and the country. We see that uh, we face those shortages. Um, it remains the moral and ethical obligation of all the residents to help each other. Um, joining um, with volunteers um, and community leaders offer a solution. The SMART concept has undergone a lot of research, planning, and review. The municipalities and fire companies feel strongly that SMART can overcome this problem and solve it with collaboration, providing both fire and rescue services to our neighbors. Okay, thank you. Any questions for the Chief? Tyler? Good afternoon, Commissioners. Good afternoon. I'm Tyler Dixon, Fire Chief of the South Williamsport Fire Department. I live on 405 Hastings Street, South Williamsport, PA. Um, I'm not going to reiterate what Chief Minier said because I feel he covered it pretty well. I just want to take this time to say thank you um, for even meeting with us and considering um, doing whatever you can to help us. Um, and I'm going to speak on behalf of my fire department and on behalf of my borough when uh, I reiterate one thing that Chief said about the dwindling volunteer fire service. I come from a career fire department in Los Angeles. I have a bachelor's degree in public safety and fire science. Uh, this is what I do for a profession. I'm also a state professional fire instructor for the state of California prior to coming here, where I taught career firefighters how to be career firefighters and stay alive. Uh, the department I was in ran over a million calls a year. We had multiple working structure fires a day, and it was never an issue. I come here, and the tones go off, and my wife cries as I go out the door, because I have less than five responders responding to calls in my borough at this point, and she doesn't know if I'm going to come home at any point. Um, if something is not done now, my fire company will not exist in a month. That's just plain and simple facts. It's beyond dire straits at this point. My borough residents deserve fire safety protection. They deserve it at the top notch level. Um, my fire company has uh, bled and sacrificed for a long time, um, but uh, you know, uh, volunteerism and the job of a firefighter continues to increase. The time away from family continues to increase and we're still operating on a business model that Ben Franklin operated with in the 1700s. We're asking more and more and more of our volunteer firefighters, and they've only got so much to give on top of their families and the times. And that's why we're seeing that dwindling of the fire service, uh, volunteer-wise. 
In the 1970s, the state of Pennsylvania had almost half a million volunteer firefighters. We're down to about 20,000 now in the state. Um, we're not the only ones hurting. Um, Lycoming County is not the only ones hurting. Um, Lycoming County is just lucky enough to have fire chiefs that have the guts to stand up and speak about it and ask for help. So I just wanted to, to reiterate the fact of how dire the situation is and how if we don't do something, somebody's going to get killed. It's probably going to be a firefighter and it's probably going to be a citizen on top of it. Um, and I only want to reiterate that to show you how much appreciation that I have for your help. Um, that's all I have. So thank you so much for your time and your help. I appreciate it. Thank you. You know, we, we want to thank both of you for, for coming forth and putting together the materials and so forth. As you talk, you know, as we talk about the reduction in volunteers, it's important for us to understand that it's in the context of smaller families, right? Think about how most families had five, six, ten people. It's in the context of the loss of population in rural America. So, you know, sometimes we beat ourselves up and we say, oh, nobody wants to volunteer anymore. Well, the reality is there's just a whole lot of fewer people around. Um, it's, it, you see it in so many ways. So, um, and, and this concept of having one entity handle all of the paperwork, the human resource, the uh, workers' comp, and so forth, is so critical and to supplement volunteers with paid personnel when we don't have volunteers available when they can't get out because they're working and so forth so uh, I want to thank also all the township supervisors from both both South Williamsport yeah we have uh, the chairman of Willis Soccer would you like to say yeah more? do you want to make some comments yes. for, the, for the work the they did quick, because both both townships came together or township Amber I should say uh, all South Williamsport and the township of Willis Soccer their council people have all agreed to this and signed the agreement, which I believe is going to start August 1st. And they're putting money into it. Yes, the region. That is extremely important. The county's putting money into it. The township and the borough 150 apiece. are putting money into it. 150000 apiece. Yeah. So it's it's not just one uh, entity. Yeah. Uh, Mark Sorman, chairman of Lost Hike Township. And, uh, you know, the, the theme I think I've heard all day, which is which is awesome for our county, is everybody working together. So interesting enough, this thing started with uh, Mike and I both being at the market house in Loyal Sock Township, and he said, geez, you know, we're struggling with volunteers. Someday we gotta look at this. And I said to him, yeah, you know, we're gonna have to look at, do we pay somebody to be part of this? And I think it was two weeks later that uh, South Williamsport approached Mike, and Mike called me and he said, oh my God, the opportunity's here in front of us. And as a group, we sat down, you know, thanks to you know our our board, um, Mike Reed is here as well, one of our supervisors, and we looked at it because the thing that you know the number one thing we say when we take oath is the protection of our <coughs> citizens, and there's just no way we're moving forward as a county without the regionalization. And this is a, this is a great start. Are we perfect? Probably not, but are we going to fine tune it and move forward and look for other municipalities to join us in the future? Absolutely, and that's that's going to be the success. But it, it really is. It, it's down to a community where people are willing to sit down, talk about it, work it out, put egos aside. I think we talk about that very often. Absolutely. The biggest problem with regionalization is is egos of each department. South Williamsport put their ego behind them. Loyal Sock put their ego behind them. And as communities, we put this thing together. So I, I'm, I'm very thankful of the commissioners for supporting it because I think it shows that the support from the commissioners for regionalization is also there. All communities need to start looking at it. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Mike, you'd like to say anything? I'll just say thank you, Mark. Pretty much summed it up. So. Okay, great. Thank you. You know, the request was for more. And so if you want to want to that. Thing. Yeah, the, the townships, the township of Little Sock and South Newport Borough, they, they each uh, I decided to put 150,000 in. Um, when they came to us, they asked for 80,000 seed money to get started, and then 100,000 each year for the five-year contract. And uh, we asked Mike about that. He goes, "Well, I wanted to go for the, we'll be up in the go for the moon." <laughs> yeah. So we said we appreciate that, um, but we would, we would start well, after we discussed. We started with had discussion about the 80,000 seed money. And then we give you an open invitation to come back to us in the future. And we can have that discussion. So. Anything else? No. Okay, I have a motion to accept action item 4.8. I'll move to approve. I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 So carried. Thank, Thank you. you.
Yep. And thank you all the partners Amen. involved in this. Okay, Maya. The next item, 4.9, um, it's supposed to approve the emergency watershed protection grant and agreement with Natural Resources Conservation Service. Uh, this is an application we submitted a couple months ago. It's in the amount of um, $97,008, and this is for two stream bank stabilization projects that we're doing within the county. Okay, I have a motion. I'll need to approve. I'll second that. Any questions or discussion? Yeah, I did. Uh, Maya, let me make sure I have the right one. This is emergency watershed protection, right? Correct. Okay, so, like, in section 1A, and you go down to uh, uh, number 5, comply with the pro uh, property management standards set forth in C uh, 7 CFR, because it's the numbers, and all applicable federal, state, and local laws. So, I, you know, obviously we always have to apply, you know, we have to uh, follow the state and federal laws. But what, what is CFR? What is that? Code of Federal Regulations. Code of Federal yeah, exactly. Regulations. It's yeah. a catalog of federal registers. So you'll have, there'll be a document that after you're all sent it back, there'll be an SF source one that will be coming, but that doesn't occur usually until after you accept and acknowledge the award. So as soon as that we do this, you'll start seeing see, um, some of those forms come forth with um, compliance with um, terms and conditions. Okay. It's a formality. Right, very good. Thank you. Uh huh. Okay. No motion. I'm here to approve. Uh, second. Call fair side. Aye. Aye. Uh, the next item goes along with this um, particular award. It's um, vote to approve them with the watershed protection operation and maintenance plan and agreement or with Natural Resource Conservation Service. This is just additional terms and conditions to comply with the grant. It gets into more detailed information, which is specific to the project, such as you know, what's required um, regarding the land and everything when they start doing the stream bank project. Okay. Got a motion. I'll move to approve. I second. Call your side. Aye. 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 So carried. Uh, the next item is vote to approve fiscal year 2022-2023. Um, hazardous material response fund grant agreement. Um, this is in the amount of $27,906, and these funds will be used by DPS for training purposes, education and programs, as well as to offset costs to support their share activities. Okay, now motion. I move to approve. A second. All three side. Aye. Aye, so carried. Uh, the next one before you is to approve purchase of drone and accessories. Um, for um, RMUS, um, they're a vendor that's approved for this particular drone. There were three quotes received. Um, um, fortunately, they all work through RMUS as their full source provider, and this is a particular drone used for damage assessment, which will be used by DPS. Okay. Do we do we know the amounts? Yes. Yeah, sorry, thirteen thousand. I believe nine hundred ninety-nine dollars. It is a budget. It is a budget. Okay. It is a budget. capital budget. Okay. But how many how many departments now have drones? Because I I know we we bought a drone and, and all of a sudden you know you use it all the time. Three on the other one. Third one. Okay. So I think it's the third, um, if I recall. We were close on to conservation. Yeah. yeah. So this would be number four. Can, can we not share a drone? Are they, are the, I think the drones may also be different in terms of their capabilities, depending on what they're doing. But the, the, yeah, they and so different. what I just understand from talking just briefly with Jerry and the, and the brief conversation that we had with it, you know, each has different storing capabilities and, you know, characteristics, just like, you know, a computer does. Um, for instance, with regarding storage and what you exactly need it for. You also have to get certification to operate them. Right. It's just not anybody can operate them. Uh, we want to, here's a good point, we don't want to get a, a habit where every department's ordering their own. Yeah. It's costly. Yeah. yeah. Ours was paid for with um, transportation funds. Okay. So it'll be used, it has to be used specifically for transportation items. So we wouldn't actually be able to share it with somebody else unless it was for transportation. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's you a know. good point. Good point. And, and while ours are separate uh, financing, we have worked close with conservation and Tim 
and we will complement each other. You know, he was gracious enough to help us with the uh, layer tool assessment after like wind damage. Right. Um, but we, the way Pima's moving everything, dashboard assessments and crowdsourcing, uh, we really do need to work this. Okay, Chief? At the time of need, there's multiple sites that need that service at the same time. Okay. So to have more than one, it's especially as the technology has hiccups, you need a backup or you need additionals to uh, support the mission. Okay, good point. And for Thank our you. purposes, if there's something, an emergency where it happened like the Lairdsville situation, or if it could affect transportation, we would be able to help with that, you know, if Hutch were to call us or somebody were to call us and say, hey, you know, we want you to do an assessment of the roads in the area, then we would be able to send Sal out with ours also. Okay. A motion. I'll move to approve. I'll second. All in favor, sorry. Aye. 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 So carried. All right, thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Bye-bye. 4.13, Forrest Lehman. I'll take it. Okay. okay. Commissioner is seeking your approval uh, on the pay schedule update for poll workers with respect to training sessions and mileage reimbursement. Okay. So I recall we are uh, yep. um, increasing the training sessions from $30 to $40 and then the uh, Tied future poll worker mileage reimbursement to the current county mileage reimbursement rate. Okay. So we're we updating what our change was. Yeah, and we want to thank all the, the individuals that work the polls for the uh, primaries and the general election. Uh, in many cases, they, they travel for some great distances. Yeah. And um, well, up north, it's an hour and a half down here. Right. And it's just not two times a year. Yeah, yeah they can have training. And, right. So we want to thank them for their, their dedication and service. Have a motion? I'll move to approve. I'll second. All fair side? Aye. 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 4.14, Jason, you still on? Yes, sir. Commissioner's 4.14 is uh, in the, the sixth amendment to Petro Choice contract that we have. We have once again received another price increase from Petro Choice for our contracts where they provide our gas fluid for our diesels, all our greases, our lubricants, and so forth for all of our heavy equipment. Speaking your approval. Okay, motion. I move to approve. A second. All in favor, aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. All right. Commissioner, comment. <coughs> uh, yes, we. Uh, we received the appraisal back, the second appraisal back on the building we're looking at for purchasing the corner. Uh, we've been working on this diligently for quite some time. Um, we all know the history of, of uh, the corner needing a building. It's been over 10 years. Um, I've been in the seat for just under three. And I, I, I know we've looked at probably a, a half a dozen buildings since I've been here uh, that just weren't suitable. We thought we had one that looked like a very strong possibility and we've worked on it we've had two appraisals done on it and um, um, unfortunately we've come to the conclusion that it's just not going to be able to be purchased um, the appraisal price comes in between 1.7 and 1.9 million dollars the owner wants 3.5 we cannot legally pay more for a building than what the appraisal says it would be very responsible for us financially to do that. As much as this building is needed, and we stress it, as much as it's needed, this cannot be an option. And we've come to that realization this week. We have worked with our attorney to try to find out every possible way to try to make the situation work. And uh, we have spent countless hours trying to figure out a way. Uh, Commissioner Mayor Beadle has put a ton of time into it, speaking to the owner. And um, you know, it's been frustrating, but we haven't been able to do that. Uh, the light at the end of the tunnel is, uh, I spoke to their two commissioners. We have a possibility on some land. And we'll meet with those in individuals in two weeks. Um, it's excellent location. It's great land for us. 
we would not make it a, a building for all the entities we included. This land is still within the magistrate area. It's, it's in the city of Williamsport, and it's it's uh, west of Hebron Street, so the magistrate falls in this area. So we could do the magistrate and the corner building and uh, make it that size of a building. There's enough land there that we could acquire to do so. And we could have this up and going within a year where we could have it constructed within a year. Uh, the cost of that would be about the same price uh, that this building plus its build outs, because we're acquiring this building for 3.5, but then we have to do the build outs, which could be somewhere around $6 million until you're said and done. This building would be brand new and it'd be <coughs> less the cost of that. Won't be the same square footage, but it'd be less less uh, the cost. It'd be a new building. It won't be retrofitted to the coroner's needs. It'd be exactly what the coroner's needs are because it'd be designed to his specifications from construction. Um, when I spoke to the, uh, the former individual of the business who uh, is setting up the meeting, he was very excited about it. He thought it was a very good, strong possibility that this could happen. So he is setting it up for two weeks from now. And we'll be meeting with those individuals. And then at that time, we'll be able to release more information on this. We understand this is a very, very uh, serious issue that has to be addressed and we're going to address it. Uh, we, would have, we would have loved to have this building work out, but financially we cannot do that. We cannot do that to the taxpayers of this county. Uh, we cannot legally overpay for a price of a building of what the appraisal says. Gentlemen? I just say that you know, this is the first time that I, I feel very confident that this is going to move forward. And, and, and provide uh, our corner a, a state-of-the-art building with expansion capabilities and uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm pretty pretty positive that this is going to move forward. And I don't want to say publicly announcing where it's at because it's not fair to them until they meet with us. So the only thing I, I want to add is that I think we don't ever want to put all our eggs in one basket. And so I would encourage the coroner to continue to look and, and uh, if there's land that's available that uh, entities have, uh, it would be great uh, to have that and, and certainly build it. Come on up, yes. Jeff. Yeah. And we also understand your needs in the meantime with the, with the uh, vehicles. Yeah. Well, and, and I so guess somehow the first appraisal got lost at 4.3 million on the same building. And I guess that's what I'd like someone to explain to me how we can go from 1.8 million to 4.3 million. Um, the only difference was the six to eight hundred thousand dollar build out from the first appraisal. So that's where I'm. I'm really struggling with how, and the cost of construction today, new construction. I think you're going to be in the ten million dollar range to do new construction for this building. And I, I just, I have never been as a coroner for 22 years in this county these guys know you know i've penny pinched i've done everything from building trucks you know our first truck was put together by my dad and i in the you know with a concept in mind and we went to lowe's and bought materials and built the truck out to do what we needed and we ran that truck until it got smashed in 2013 in a crash and then after that we've knew what we needed and we went and improvised and tried to save county tax dollars. Um, unfortunately, I can't save Tolly County tax dollars on a building that meets our needs. The building we were in for 16 months, 17 months, whatever, um, met the needs of the office and can easily be modified to meet the needs of my office plus the DJ's office, and yet we still can't seem to <laughs> make it happen. Um, and I don't, I can't, I, it doesn't make any sense to me. We have an, a real estate appraiser who's been consulted in this whole process and he feels it's a good deal and he's been in real estate business since he took his first breath. And yet we still can't seem to get this done. Um, so I just couldn't, there's a lot of things that I, we've looked at, I mean in 10 years, 
Ken George and I have looked at every vacant building in this whole Williamsport metro area. Um, they are either Don't me. And, oh, and Matt, and Matt, <laughs> and we drove oh, Matt all over too. And we've looked at buildings that could meet the needs, but the price is exorbitant. It's a bad location. It's not functional, um, or the price is right, but basically you're going to take a bulldozer through it, and you're paying for the lot, you know, to be to build the building. So. I'm that's where I'm at. I just can, can I address know, think, that question yes. for you so the first appraisal that was done was supposed to be as is so when we go to purchase a building we have to get a fair market of value appraisal on the building as it is now somehow between um, the request for us to order the appraisal and the completion of the appraisal the appraiser thought it was to be done after completion of certain renovations and we don't know how the mix-up happened and at the end of the day it really doesn't matter because we'll just be beating each Mr. other up was that was that with the owner doing the with the owner doing, doing the certain renovations doing the work yes yeah, with he the was going to build it out which we had yeah. to be careful because we had to bid it out because of prevailing wage which right you know, we couldn't just have them do the renovations. but right. still if you take the eight hundred thousand out of that you're still at three point five million right for so the building so the request was to work backwards I asked the appraiser about working backwards and he, the appraiser was the first one and he said he couldn't do that he said he would have to do a whole new appraisal. At that point, we ordered a whole new appraisal with a different appraiser because, frankly, we were concerned that when the appraiser had appraised it one way with renovations done, that he wouldn't necessarily have the objectivity that the law requires for a fair market appraisal. And that's why we went to a second person because it's very hard when you do one appraisal to then all of a sudden shut your mind off and do it a different way. That second appraisal came in at the one seven to one nine. And believe me, I, I've tried to work every which way. One, one thought that we had was to try to lease the building. The problem is that you have to lease the building at a fair market value. And I had thrown an idea out to my colleagues about us renting it for a certain time, and I was very excited. I thought this thing was gonna work, and Commissioner Metzger said, I mean, Sayer said to me, <coughs> Commissioner, you've got it rented at $27 a square foot. Well, fair market value is about seven dollars a square foot. It and deflated your balloon. <laughs> it deflated my balloon big time, uh, because I really thought I ha there was a solution yeah. there. So, so the only thing I can say is let's let's work every way we can. Let's look at every continue to uncover. We we have dialed back the number of entities, which will which will make it easier. Just the corner. We really do want to put Magistrate Fry there we, if we, we have, can. Yeah, we have, we to, have to because we need. To, we're in a federal building that the federal government doesn't want to have us in. They want to get rid of buildings. And so, so the only thing I can say to you, Mr. Coroner, is that I am firmly committed. I believe my colleagues are firmly committed. We will move this post haste and just, if there is land that any entity has, whether it's a volunteer fire company or any other entity, or a business person or whatever, come forward contact Chuck and if there's a way that we can make it work it benefits I mean I know there is some land out there uh, in addition to the the leads that Commissioner Metzger's pursuing so and we'll let you know they're setting up the meeting and in two weeks I'll let you know because you're gonna be there okay. yeah and it can be included and uh, so um, we'll be moving forward on it okay any other public or commissioners comment? yeah um, Currently, obviously, there's a challenge for employers, you know, with workforce. Very difficult, and, and the county's no exception. And uh, we're putting a lot of effort into um, our workforce here. How do we attract them? How do we retain them? Um, we're losing a lot of good personnel with a lot of institutional knowledge now. Uh, and in some cases, and I'm sure Scott can can talk about that, uh, when it's uh, your prison or adult probation, uh, detectives, these are very skilled positions. 
that you need a lot of institutional knowledge. You need a lot of years' experiences to understand what to do. And right now, our prison is we're at critical mass, and um, we are negotiating right now with the union as well as the non-union uh, to to look at their compensation packages, which will be significant. Um, you know, there's uh, an article in the, in the paper today about the many reasons why we lack a workforce, and one of them is that women are not coming back into the workforce uh, uh, due to the pandemic and the cost of childcare and this. Another reason is that the stock market was doing so well, many people didn't have to go back to work. Okay, they could start to take a retirement earlier. Uh, there are many reasons, but is still a challenge for us. And uh, as we navigate this course, it's, it's not going to be tough. I mean, it's not going to be easy, but we'll get through it. And we want our employees, our seasoned employees, to know we'll be there for them. It, it just take, takes time. And I want to go to another article that was in the paper this morning, uh, and it had to do with uh, an appeal on two, two properties. And I, I want the public to understand the value of a reassessment. This is, it's, it's not something that I look forward to. Okay, but here's two examples in today's paper where residents will be picking up the rest of the, the, the taxes. So Coles <clears throat> appealed their taxes. They were at four million three hundred and ninety thousand dollars okay and uh, their new assessed value by applying the common level ratio because we didn't want to give them that they appealed and they won is now two million six hundred and seventy seven thousand nine hundred dollars now that's just for this year only for 2022 Mind you that that's also very important to understand because they can come back in a and appeal their taxes again and get the common level ratio applied. So for the city, and I'm just going to talk for the city, the city's tax is 16.22 mills. The city school district is 17.24 mills. And the county is 6.5. That brings the millage rate to 39.96 mills. A lot of mills. And especially when 20, 28% of our uh, Williamsport has a poverty rate of, below poverty rate of uh, 23 or 28%. That's, that's a lot of mills. Um, but this is the tax. So the old tax on the first building. They were paying $175,424. After the reassessment, it went down to, or, or appeal, it went down to $107,000. That's $68,000 and, and some change, reduction in taxes. Now, what does that mean? Okay, that's good. I mean, uh, listen, I want to pay less. Okay, but that means that just in one property, $68,000 is going to have to be made up in doing what? Raising taxes to every single person, every property. And that's what's happening for the past 15 years. And, and now it's, it's critical because our common level ratio is down to 56%, which means if you apply that, to an appeal that's uh, 40 some percent uh, discount. I, I'll say discount, I don't know what, what to say. But that's how they went from 43, 4.3 million to 2.6. And we're gonna spread that to our tax base. Because I don't think the school district's changing their, their uh, procedures. I don't think that the city can do anything different. 85% of their cost is fixed. They don't have 
any you know any leeway um, and the county provides a tremendous amount of service for our people uh, at 6.5 so we have to come together as community talk about this see how we're going to what we're going to do because this will continue to be a, a, a bigger issue in the future uh, the very near future so um, I found that amazing that that you can continue to appeal and appeal and appeal year after year after year and and, uh, and apply that common level ratio to, to get a reduction in the taxes no, I, I think that what you're telling us is that this Board of Commissioners needs to to take a vote on whether to do a reassessment and the reason is that it will still take us three years before it is done if we vote today to do a reassessment we will get on a waiting list of the company that does reassessments and it will not be started uh, for 2026 yeah 2026 and then of course it takes about a year a year and a half to do it and then you have some waiting period so we we should really move out on that because um, and and if there's the support to do it it passes if there isn't the support to do it it doesn't pass but the point is that I think we should we should uh, put it up to a vote that also will stimulate conversation with the public well, I think the and public help the public understand the reason why 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 I think that it's necessary to do it I don't want to speak for my colleagues but what he just described is that a building that was worth four that was assessed at 4.3 million people were paying taxes on 4.3 million got it reduced to 2.6 because of the common level ratio which is basically the law so um, thank you for bringing that to our attention yeah, and, I, and I think we have to, to educate the public as well yes and part of that education is very difficult because I I can't tell you if your taxes are going to be raised if they're going to be the same or if they're going to drop they all do they the, the, one of those three categories are going to happen but I can't tell you I mean for me to vote I, I'm going to say, think that I, I'm going to have a significant increase in taxes for me, all right? But I can't tell you what that is. And for others in the Waysport area where we saw some some drop uh, or the depreciation level drop, they may see less. You know, they may see less in taxes. But no one can tell you exactly how that's going to work out. No, but what we can say is that when an appeal is made, if the common level ratio is not at 0.56, entities will not be able to get their taxes reduced by 44%. Oh, right. Right? That's, That's exactly what we can right. say. So that means that the $68,000 that you described that is now being distributed over every other taxpayer will not be distributed. It may be that in the reassessment, the building doesn't come in at 4.6 or 4.2, but there'll be equity between taxpayers. And that equity will last for a certain amount of time until that common level ratio changes. And that's based on, on fair market value and, and calculations that are done by the state tax equalization board. But for some time, there will be the restoration of some equity, which now you're describing is not. I mean, they, they haven't done anything illegal. They're getting a legal reduction in their taxes, but the value of those taxes being made up by everyone else. And you see, because what we're going to do by not, you're going to be forcing other taxing bodies to to appeal people's taxes. Right. Open it up. Like or to raise the millage, right? To raise the millage, to raise more taxes, when in fact part of what's going on is an unequal distribution of the tax base among entities so when when large big box stores see that maybe their buildings are not worth what they thought they were worth they have the ability to go into court with lawyers and appeal the decision and they're not doing anything wrong they're not doing anything illegal the average homeowner doesn't necessarily have the ability to go in and get that appeal so okay any other comments no Okay, public comes. Tom? Um. 
if I could just add, I want to see a reduction in the size of government because that could be a reduction in taxes. Okay, there's there's no question. Government is way too big. It's just way too big, state and federal government, and and we need to we need to reel that in. Yeah. Tom, I agree to that. <laughs> Tom Adams, Williamsport. Uh, thank you for the volunteer fire companies and all you people do. They're ministers of the Lord, whether, they, whether you know that or not, you know, and it's very important work, just like everyone in government. I want to thank you for that. Uh, a little bit of concern with the, um, the solar farms, you know, that were was brought up last week, and I know uh, I'm sure everything's not always set in stone with that kind of thing. Uh, a little concern with um, their, I don't know, maybe the desire to get on agricultural lands. Um, now, I don't know. Uh, this is just a thought, how things are going with, with the administration we have in power right now in, in Washington and, and a lot of crazy people that don't care about our history and really care about people, actually. Um, they're making it more difficult to farm, to make it productive, to make it um, you know something people can live, live off of. Will, it be, will they be presented with these... Um, solar farm industry come to the, knocking on their doors and say, look, you can't make enough money to farm and why don't we use up so much of this land for, for a solar farm? I don't think it's a good idea. Unless it's in a land that they're not farming. You know, that, that could be a different, that would be a whole different story than they clear out some trees. Um, also, there, there's a lot of commercial real estate, empty lots you know that, that aren't being used and look at like homing mall you know for example there's a lot of area there where probably probably wouldn't, wouldn't hurt to put maybe some solar farms right on on the some of those buildings on top of them. how are they do it how are they work it so that that might be one way to get to them but, and i also know they said they wouldn't put anything on the hillsides um i you can still, I mean, people still build on hillsides, you know, and um, they would have to clear so much of the trees and top them or they can plant shrubs around to hold the, the, the soil in. But uh, just just to discount that right off the top, I don't, I don't know, I didn't like that approach. You know, I think it's a great idea, but it would force them to help clean up those areas too. Uh, and then, of course, the mountaintops. But I, I don't know how productive these solar farms really are going to be. You know, I just hope they're not going to be geared to try to replace fossil fuel. But we know that's what's happening, you know, and that's not good. You know, those fossil fuels aren't destroying us. Um, so there's just some concerns there. And uh, I think there was a... Uh, all right, well, thank you. Thank you, Tom. Yeah. Yeah. Any other members from the public? Online? I've got a couple online. Uh, MC Green, where are the bomb shelters located in Lycoming County? How are these locations being stocked and how many people can be accommodated? Any sense of urgency about this matter? Next comment by MC Green. This is possibly the worst time in history to be talking about an increase in property tax. Thirdly, I am distressed by the failure to acknowledge my comments publicly and will complain to the commissioners about it. We just read your comments. I just want to clarify okay. something for <clears throat> the con and I don't know whether she was referring to the conversation about reassessment. I think so. That is not necessarily a tax increase. What it is, it's a redistribution of the tax burden in a more equitable manner. So you know, the typical uh, analysis shows that a certain percent go up, a certain percent go down, and a certain percent stay the same. But it's, that's, I think, what Commissioner Macera is talking about with educating the public. And I don't want to put words in your mouth, but it's, it's, not, it's not necessarily a tax increase. It's really redistributing the tax burden in a fair way. Okay. Any other comments? Director? That's it. Okay. 
we've completed our agenda, so we'll be adjourned till next week, Thursday, July 28th, 10 a.m. right here in this room. Thank you. We got a lot of fun. Yeah. 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 Yeah.